All right, everybody, this is a unknown session with our residents, and we're going to just have a discussion about these cases. Go super fast, okay? Aaron, ready to run it? Yep. All right, so guys, I'm going to give you a few seconds to take a look at this and tell me what's going on. You might want to, yes, that's a good idea to show them that. Back up a little bit. And yes, this mag is good and just move around a little bit, Aaron, so they can see. Anybody, what tissue is this? This is lung. Is it a big resection or a biopsy? Biopsy, a biopsy. yeah, it's small. Now that, that's where the money is, Aaron, so you might want to just stay there and keep it there. Just leave it there, don't move it. Okay. Oh, just move it a little bit to the left so you can see a little bit of normal lung and get a, yeah, that's always a good idea to have some comparison. All right, guys, what's going on? Giant cells. Is Giant cells. Foreign, foreign body reaction. Foreign body reaction, that's very good. Yeah. So you're right, you basically got it. Next case. Foreign body reaction. <laughs> <laughs> but what, no, 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 I had to come back to yeah, that. Yeah. Come back to that. Yes, so what do we call it? Aspiration. No. no. So that's where the trick is. I mean, Once you have the, the finding, now you have to say what that finding means or what that giant cell uh, reaction is to. That's really the, the kicker here. Are these in vessels? Can we have uh, polarization? I don't show them. Uh, is it in vessels? In fact, the, the thing you're thinking about is rarely ever in, in a vessel. Mm, the, the drug material? Yes. So he's thinking about talc. IV drug. So talc granulomatosis. In talc granulomatosis, the material comes in through the vessels, right? The, the person injects the pills into their, or, or those dissolved pills into their veins, and the substance, the particular substance goes in through blood vessels, but it does not stay in the blood vessels. That's the, that's the key. So if you're looking for stuff to be within blood vessels, you're never going to find it, never. So what happens, then? where does it go after it comes into the blood vessels? It extrudes out of the blood vessels. And where are the blood vessels in the lung? In the interstitial. In the interstitial. So it gets stuck there, out, outside the blood vessels, but in the interstitial. So come back to that, that spot, Adam. The initial, the, like the diagnostic one. Yeah, there. Give, give, give me one, yeah, and leave it there. No, what, one lower than this. And just leave it there. Just leave it there for a second. Bring it into focus. So all those little particles are likely to be what, guys? This stuff here. What is that particle stuff? If, if Frido is right, and this is actually drug abuse where somebody is shooting up their pills. What material is that likely to be? Sacrose. What is that? Sacrose. Sacrose. Cotton. What are the filler particles inside pills that when the, when the like oxycontin, when it dissolves, what's left, left behind? What's the filler in those pills? Nobody? Sugar? Yeah. No. It's called microcrystalline cellulose. Oh. Microcrystalline cellulose. That's what this stuff is likely to be. I, I didn't bring a polarizer, but do you have a polarizer there? No. no. So if you polarize this, this is going to light up like a Christmas tree. This thing is super oh. polarizable. Oh yeah, very good. That's the poor man's polarizer. <laughs> so that's what this is. This is called talc granulomatosis because in the old days the filler used to be talc. But nowadays the filler is usually microcrystalline cellulose. Okay? Next case, Aaron, let's move. It's been too long with this anyway. I think we took three minutes and 40 seconds for this case. Oh. Too long. Ooh. Normal lung? What's going on here? Oh. I'll let you guys take a look at this. Is there any other focus that's uh, abnormal here? Or is that the only one? That was the only one that jumped out at me at low power. What about the uh, next piece over? There's got to be more than that. Nope. So what's in the, uh, show us the alveoli for a second. Anybody, what's that? Smoke and macrophages. Yes, correct. And what's the other, like, really bad name for this? Discriminative. No, 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 not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> what does that say? RB. RB, what does it stand for? Respiratory bronchiolitis. That means the patient is a smoker. smoker. And when patients are smokers like this, they always get macrophages like this. Now, if I tell you this patient has interstitial lung disease and has bilateral infiltrates, what's the diagnosis? This is the only finding in the lung. RBILD. RBILD. That's what RBILD means. 
is that you did a surgical lung biopsy and the only thing you saw in that was RB. And so the RB is the only explanation for the patient's finding. All right, I will move it to the next. I thought there was something more there, but I thought there was a little bit of emphysematous background. Yes, emphysis. might be, could be. Could be also has emphysema, but that wouldn't explain interstitial infiltrates, right? Okay, Aaron, case number three. I'll let you move it around a little okay. and make a little. Uh, yeah, so that is where the money is, and then there's that little thing on the surface. Bring it into focus for a second and leave it here for a second so they can look at it. Everybody got a sense of what it is? Now move it back to lower Mac and take it to the left. Yeah, there, show them that. A little more to the left. And bring it into focus. Ideas? Show them the thing on the right too. Now, a little bit to the right now. Yeah, that stuff and leave it. Leave it there. I don't know, carcinoma. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you're right, Frido. So that stuff on the left could be adenocarcinoma. It, it's very papillary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What's the other thing in the pleura that can look like that? Mesothelioma. Mesothelioma. So you really, are, if this if this is pleura, and I don't know either, then the thing on the left could be mesothelioma, and the right could be a sarcomatoid component and you'll have a biphasic mesothelioma. If the thing on the left is an adenocarcinoma, then this becomes a sarcomatoid carcinoma, because the right side is sarcomatoid, which is now we call that pleomorphic carcinoma. All right, got it, guys? Okay, next case, and let's move it along. So we'll see as much as we can. Fat. In the lung, fat really, when in, for a lung pathologist, fat means only two or three things. What, what is, where are we? You can Sorry. see it. Huh? No, yes, uh, but what, what was that that Aaron showed right in the beginning? Lymph yeah, lymph node. We're in a lymph node and this is perinodal tissue. Show them the fun stuff, Aaron. Oh, uh, yeah, this. Okay, this. Get it into focus, great. Everybody okay with that? Now move it around a little bit and show them the other stuff too. Uh, in, yeah. In the lesion. In the lesion. It's in a lymph node, so this is bad news, right? Mm -hmm. This is bad. Any ideas? Something malignant? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something malignant for sure. So my feeling is there are actually two things. Just if you stop it here. Yeah. See, there are, again, it's like the previous case. There is an epithelial component here. Clearly, to my, my, my eye at least, carcinoma. And then you've got a very sarcomatoid, pleomorphic looking thing here. So my guess is this is a met from a sarcomatoid carcinoma. Could this be other things? Yes, it could be a met from a meso you know, biphasic mesothelioma. It could be a met from a melanoma, those things. But the most likely thing is that this is a met from a sarcomatoid lung cancer. Does that make sense? So that's what sarcomatoid lung cancer means. It has an epithelial and a spindle cell or bizarre component. Okay, next. Ooh. Oh, there's no missing the lesion here. Yes, it's pretty much all lesion, right? But look at this, guys. So, and if you go one lower mag, and look at these holes on the, uh, just focus it a little bit so we can see what those holes are on the top. That's actually fat. Mm -hmm. So whatever this thing is, is in the fat. Okay, now you can show how. Huh? Invasive. invasive. So that's really a good thing to know up front is you're dealing with an invasive lesion. So find a good spot, Aaron, and then show them at one higher mag and leave it there for a few seconds. Sure, could be. Could be squamous cell carcinoma. You'd want to see some keratinization, right? Or you want to see a diffuse P40 or P63. So that's a good thought. And a little bit, it's a little out of focus to my eye at least. Yeah, that's great. The making glands. Anything else? So show them different areas. Is there anything different in pattern than just this? It's abundant cytoplasm. Abundant cytoplasm, correct, Emma? Yeah. Almost making lumens almost in some places, but not yeah. great. And now back off a little, Aaron, and show them more. There is more to, to see. 
back up a little bit more. See, is there any other pattern to show? Actually, uh, go to the bottom left. Yes, look at that. See? Now squamous seems very unlikely, right? It's a very papillary thing like the other one. Now, actually, this is a beautiful spot. So I don't get it into, into focus here. This is a beautiful spot to show the, the pattern here. So this is actually pleura. Yeah, I don't remember the case, but this is pleura for sure. And that is, therefore, what we were talking about before. This is the papillary portion, the epithelioid portion. If this was all we had, we'd have an epithelioid mesothelium. But we have this. Right? Clearly sarcomatoid. So this is an example of a biphasic mesothelioma. So to prove it, what you need to do is show that the, so these, the, this part of it almost never stains with mesothelial markers. It will stain with pankeratin, but nothing, nothing to prove that it's mesothelia. But this part of it often stains with mesothelium. So that's what really helps you. Once you know it's malignant, if you can show that this part is mesothelial, then by extension, that part is part of the same too. Got it, guys? Next case, let's move on. We'll, we'll go slower in the next half. Okay. Great job, Aaron, by the way. You're doing great. All right. Where are we? Stop here. Just stop here at this mic. And where do you think we are, guys? Get it slightly into focus. What's your first gut impression? Just say it. Doesn't matter. Silence. Oh, good. That's a good Why not left note? Well, we have follicles. What appears to be follicles. Do you have follicles in the thymus? No, but you no, can. No, you can. Yeah. So what is the, so why, why would you have follicles in the, okay, is there a clue here that you are in the thymus? Anything at this mic? Yeah. Where? Like, I'm not sure, I'm just being impatient, but then we just being things. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. this one, oh, that's great. Yeah, Adam, yeah. do you have the arrow? Yeah. You have the arrow? Yeah, yeah, sure. So that might be one, there might be one here, and these cysts, right? So these little cystic epithelial things, you don't see that in a normal lymph node, right? Yeah. So this is exactly right, and we'll go really fast here. This is a lesion called thymic follicular hyperplasia. Normal thymus does not have reactive follicles with germinal centers like this. When you see it, it's abnormal. And thymic follicular hyperplasia is a common finding in patients with myasthenia gravis. Good job, Emma. Very good. So when you take out the thymuses of patients with myasthenia gravis, they can look normal. They can have thymic follicular hyperplasia. Sometimes they have thymoma. So there's a range of things you can see. But that's what it, it looks like. Right? It looks like a lymph node almost. Um, the pattern of the fat is kind of gives it away. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And if you ex actually, the best thing is if you can find some epithelium there, that, like the Hassel's corpus. OK, great, Aaron. Thank you. Next one. We're doing good. 12, 12 minutes, and we've already covered like five or six cases at least. This is a. Stop here. Is like a, a instant pattern. Yes, very good. Alveolar proteinosis, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. So um, show us the high mag, Aaron, and we'll talk about it for a second since we we have a few seconds to talk about it. Um, this is caused by antibodies to to what? Anybody? It's an autoimmune disease caused by antibodies to something that then. GMCSF, very good, guys, very good. GMCSF, so that antibody thing, what it does is it prevents the macrophages that normally clear out the surfactant from the lung, it prevents them from doing their job. And then, because the surfactant doesn't clear out, it just accumulates like this. This is basically abnormal surfactant, too much surfactant in the lung, it just fills it up. And then in there, so Aaron, if you go, keep the cholesterol, that thing in, in the field, and go one higher mic. So the key to alveolar proteinosis is not a PAS stain, unlike what the books say, it doesn't matter. PAS stains everything from spit to another thing that rhymes with spit. So the, it doesn't. It stains from everything. It does not, it do, it's not useful. But this is useful. See these little cholesterol clefts? That's very useful to tell, say that this is alveolar proteinosis. Then see the, these little blobs? It's a granular looking material. That's very useful on HNA. The third very useful thing, see the alveolar septa? Mm -hmm. All, nothing's happening there. It's totally normal. So it's a pure airspace disease on histology. And that's a very helpful feature. Granular material, cholesterol clefts, those little blobs, and normal alveolar septa. Got it? Mm -hmm. Antibodies to GMCSF. Next case. Great, Aaron. OK. Are we going too fast? Everybody OK with this space? 
so we are in a lesion and this is tough yeah just show them the pattern a little bit of um, uh, just get into focus I don't know if you can Okay, well now we need higher mag. Uh, and get to focus, leave it there for a second. Change the field and uh, higher mag and leave it there for a second. That looks like a new one, think. Yeah, so that's a good thought actually. Right, everybody agree? Very uniform looking. Just change the field down again, move it to a different, maybe to the right, where there was a little bit more of a, yeah, like those areas. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, yeah. yeah. And now give us one super high mag. Like, do you have a 40x? And get this little dirt out of the field, please. You know the, the yeah. Sorry, I'm anal about that. So, so um, what do you think, guys? What, what is the most likely diagnosis? Carcinoid. Carcinoid tumor. I think, the, you know, I don't know what these are, but I think that would be the best diagnosis here. It's a very, very bland looking thing. There's no mitosis, no punctate necrosis. It's not high grade by any means. I don't know whether this is in the lung or it's a thymic lesion because thymus can have carcinoid tumors too. Now those tend to be atypical, so there's usually necrosis in there. So I'm guessing this is just a typical carcinoid tumor of the lung. And what you need to do in these cases is just go around and count mitoses. Most of them have none to very few, so you're done and it's typical carcinoid. If you do have even a single focus of punctate necrosis, that upgrades it to, to atypical. Yeah. Um, and you can do neuroendocrine markers. I do it. I do it just so that I don't miss other mimicking things. Even a chromogranin or a synaptophysin should be enough. Okay, next case. Okay, I'm not going to talk here. Just show it, show around, show this thing. This is super easy. Sh just move it around, Aaron, and show the, the all the, you know, relevant findings. Yes, yes, correct. This is a hamartoma is the new name, and the old name was chondroid hamartoma. And lesions, when the WHO doesn't have any like um, updates to make for a lesion, they just change the name. And then <laughs> when there's no, no, no updates, the next year they'll change the name again. But what are the, can anybody name the features? Like what are you seeing here? What makes this hamartoma? That's a so collection of normal tissue in abnormal arrangement. Very good, Emma. Norm, so did everybody hear that? A collection of normal tissues, benign, but they are in a haphazard, disorganized fashion. And he said cartilage, so everybody sees that. Aaron, can you show the second part, like the, the adipose tissue component, if there's any? I think in the middle, you, okay, just bring it there for a second. Yeah, so you're right, uh, Emma. So there's a fat, there's cartilage, and then there's a little bit of spindle cells in a myxoid stroma. What is all this stuff here? Like to the right of it, especially. Um, um, Aaron, just move it. Yeah, there. What is this stuff? Is that part of the tumor? Is the lung tissue? Lung tissue. Okay. Is it, or is it part of the tumor? So should we call it an epithelial hematoma? Like, is it a? The epithelium is part of the hematoma. Is it a mesenchymal lesion? It's actually a mesenchymal lesion, and this is a very common theme. Aaron, find an, an, a more florid version of this if you can. So this is entrapped lung epithelium in a hematoma. It's not part of the lesion. And it looks sometimes very, very florid. Like it's, it can go into the lesion and you think it's part of it, you know? And people in the past have actually given it names that make it seem like it's part of the lesion. But what happens in any slow-growing lesion, not just hematomas, any slow-growing mesenchymal lesion in the lung, ben you know, benign metastasizing glioma, low-grade spindle cell tumors, inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor, is that the lung epithelium gets entrapped in there and then becomes sort of reactive looking, very florid, folded, complex, but that's not part of the lesion. In fact, some of the old cases of synovial sarcoma that people saw in the lung, they called it biphasic because they thought that the epithelial part is part of the tumor, but that's just entrapped lung. Be between a what? Yeah, so that's a very good question. There is a thing called a chondroma, you know, and then people say that they see it in carny triad and stuff like that in the lung. Those are supposed to be cartilage only and not the other component. So you're not supposed to have fat or the spindle cell proliferation, just chondro you know, chondroid component alone. 
Honestly, I've never seen a true chondroma in the lung, maybe because I've not seen a Carney syndrome patient, but the vast majority of benign cartilaginous lesions in the lung are hematomas, not chondromas. They, they do have the other components too. Um, Aaron, just bring this stuff in the, that's at the bottom left, bring it in the middle. People often don't appreciate this mixoid spindle cell proliferation. You know, this is, I think this is a great